central Illinois, we are surrounded by a sea of corn. The only ships we see are a variety of tractors that bring life to these now barren fields. Small towns sporadically dot the map in this rural network of corn, soybeans, and country roads. In these virtually endless and flat fields, absent of any significant water, the maritime world can seem almost non-existent, like an ancient and faded fantasy of times past. However, tucked away in one of the many nooks of the countryside, one man's passion has brought a little bit of the ocean to central Illinois. Here it is, sitting across from one of the many surrounding cornfields, the National Museum of Ship Models and Sea History, located in Sedoris, Illinois, only 15 miles south of the University of Illinois campus. How does a National Museum on Ship Models and Sea History exist in the middle of landlocked Illinois, yet alone in a town with only 400 residents? Someone unique had to be behind the scenes. museum actually <clears throat> existed in storage barns and basements in my attic and my living room about starting about 35 years ago when I was collecting models. I've always been collecting ship models. And it got to a point where as my kids were growing up, I didn't have any time to work on them. But we got to a certain point where we were starting to look for a place to make a museum and we discovered this building in Sedoris for sale about 12 years ago. Uh, we renovated the building and started to move models in. First of all, it's very unusual. And secondly, the people in central Illinois are really landlocked. And they don't realize that the history of the world is essentially the connected with exploration and shipping. So in a way, you, you get an education when you walk through the museum, whether you want to or not. <laughs> and it does teach just by showing you the ages and types of exploration and knowledge that was gained from ships. Mm -hmm. At first, entering the museum can be overwhelming. Ship models, displays, and other historical memorabilia are crammed into every square foot of the 140-year-old building. The displays are organized by their time period or significance to world history, including displays such as sailing warships and the great steamships and liners. It is nearly impossible to soak in the 150-plus models Dr. Lozar has on display, a collection that he says took a lifetime to create. I would say when I was about eight years old, I really became very, very interested in ships and didn't really learn the history that much, but became interested as an architect in how you built structures and ships, of course, were my, my focus. And then after that, college was a big interruption to hobbies because you had no time in college, as you all are well aware. And, uh, so I didn't pick it up until after my children were born, and then this is the net result. It still remains a hobby, um, so I've begun to realize my, my true love is I'm an architect, and I like to build things, so I would much rather be building a ship model than uh, walking people through the museum. It's just a personality thing. There's only uh, about four or five that are made by me, um, a lot of the movie models, of course, were built by the builders in the studios who never got credit for their building expertise because there are no labels on any of the movie models. While the museum has been a side project rooted in Dr. Lozar's passion for the construction of ship models, it has still been the labor of a lifetime. Finding time between his career, family, and pet ferret, Dr. Lozar has managed to acquire ships from Greece, China, and India and has found that the blood, sweat, tears, and money put into the museum has come with a greater payoff. Well, I think there's a number of rewarding things that you see. One is little kids coming through with their eyes open. Um, because this generation of children is so used to punching keyboards to get something done, uh, they have a hard time realizing that people actually use their fingers to build things. The other rewarding thing is many of the... Um, the guys who in World War II and the Navy and the Army, when they come through, brings back a lot of memories 
to them and they share a lot of stories. Um, they have been a, a source of, of happiness as a, the people walk through the museum because I can see they're reliving some of their experiences and most of them are positive that they mm -hmm. talk about. Uh, they usually say, I want to come back, <laughs> which is good for yeah. us. But it's so unique in central Illinois here. Uh, the possibility exists of moving it closer to a major transportation hub like Champaign, etc. But I don't know if that's for me. Um, putting together one museum is enough for one person <laughs> during their life. A life that has been marked with the unique manifestation of his lifelong passion that through college, marriage, a career, and raising four children has remained with him since his childhood. Next time you take a road trip, consider the offbeat path to a destination unknown. For even in a little town named Sidoris, in the plains of central Illinois, the seas and oceans come to life to fascinate all who take the moment to pause, gander, and become lost. The nooks and crannies of the world are sometimes where the real treasures of humanity lie. Because even through a sea of corn, ships sail on a deep ocean of one man's dedication, passion, and love for creating.